want to buzz through some things uh, rather quickly here. And um, so we're just going to kind of hit and run uh, as we go through this uh, material and things. So let's get this started up. Last time we were talking about Solomon, and we were basically saying Solomon's the wisest man that ever lived. And then we said at the end of his life, he kind of botches up his life. He ends up with all these women. He ends up worshiping other gods, and he has these problems. And so it's kind of interesting that it's... Uh, it's like the smartest man that ever lived turns out to be a very foolish man. And the very thing that he warned his kids about is the things that he botched up himself. And so what it ends up happening, it seems to me, and I wonder if you've noticed this, have you ever noticed people that are really, really, really smart and they end up to be really, really stupid at the same time? And so you get this kind of this connection between on the back side of wisdom, that the wisdom and folly uh, actually cross over sometimes. And with Solomon, you get this, this flipping over. The very things that he warned the young man against, the adulteress and going after other gods and stuff, is the very things that he participates in himself. So, so Solomon turns his back. He's got some big problems there. And that brings up uh, Hebrews 6 and a bunch of things about, you know, whether you're saved, you're always saved, and all that kind of stuff. We'll save that for New Testament. But anyway... Wisdom and folly and the connections between the two and the narrative and things. But what happens is because Solomon goes after other gods, God comes in in chapter 11, says basically, and let me just read this, chapter 11, verse 11. The Lord said to Solomon, Since this is your attitude and you have not kept my covenant and my decrees, notice, you have not kept my covenant. God, that covenant was a big thing for God. You have not kept my covenant, my decrees, which I commanded you. I will most certainly tear the kingdom away from you and give it to one of your subordinates. Nevertheless, for the sake of David, your father, I will not do it during your lifetime. So actually, Solomon gets spared. Why? Because David was his father. And he actually says, because David was your father, I won't do it to you because you're David's kid. And he basically spares Solomon on David's behalf, which is really an interesting uh, concept there. Now what happens is the kingdom is going to split north and south. I call these two guys the Boehm brothers, okay? The Boehm brothers, and this is when the kingdom splits. The south is going to be Rehoboam, and Rehoboam is going to be Solomon's son. Rehoboam is going to be in the Davidic line. Rehoboam is going to be the king of Judah. Judah is going to be in the south. So there's one tribe in the south that stays kind of in the Davidic line, Judah in the south, and the ten tribes in the north, they get carried away by this guy Jeroboam. So Jeroboam, who actually is, is an antagonist to Rehoboam, and Jeroboam sets up in the north, the north will be called Israel, the south will be called Judah. So the kingdom's going to split at this point, and this is a big thing for Israel. Under Saul, David, and Solomon, the kingdom had been united and now 10 tribes are going to get carried to the north. The 10 tribes in the north are going to go to Jeroboam, who's not Davidic. And then the south is one tribe, Judah, is going to go to Rehoboam. So now we'll look back at that. So what we have here is the kings, the divided, what they call a divided monarchy, as opposed to the united monarchy. The united monarchy is Saul, David, and Solomon. The divided monarchy is a bunch of kings in the north, Israel, and a bunch of kings in the south, Judah. Um, now, there's going to be like three or four dates that I want you to know. First date I want you to know is what? David's what? Okay, David's a thousand. A second date, I want to introduce this today, is this is when the kingdom split at 931. I don't want you to know that date, 931. David's a thousand. You can figure Solomon's right after that so you can get to kind of close to this. This date, 722, is an important date. This is when the northern kingdom of Israel, this is the ten tribes in the north, get carried off to Assyria, to Nineveh. Assyria, Nineveh is the capital of Assyria. The Assyrians were exceedingly cruel people. As soon as I say Assyria, who's, uh, who, who's the prophet that comes to mind? Jonah, okay? So Jonah, uh, Assyria, and the... the Basically, the ten tribes get carried off to Assyria. He rips off all the people of wealth and of, of means. He leaves the poor people in the land, and he scatters the Jews. The ten tribes are scattered throughout Assyria. And the, have those ten tribes been regathered? Are the ten tribes really scattered around the world? From 722 B.C., are they scattered among the world till this day? 
Well, you say no, Hildebrandt, they're really scattered in New York City, uh, most of them, but anyway, sorry. But um, you know, the, the, the Jews are scattered all over the world, Poland, Germany, all that kind of stuff, and now they've gone back to Israel, but you know, like we said, there's more Jews in New York City than there is in Israel. So, um, but this is when the, the northern 10 tribes were scattered, and they have been scattered ever since, okay? Now, the, so that's Assyria. About 130 years later, Judah, Judah lasts about another 130 years. And Judah gets scattered in 586. And this is, a, this is a really big date. 586 is when the temple of Solomon, Solomon's temple, is destroyed. So this is a really important date. This is when Babylon comes in and destroys the temple of Solomon. So the temple is destroyed, and the Jews are hauled off to Babylon and by the way, who are some Jews that were hauled off to Babylon that you know? So remember Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, those guys, Ezekiel, those types of things. Does anybody remember the prophet who spoke just before the Babylonians came in and destroyed the temple? Does anybody know what prophet did that he cried? He was a crying prophet. He cried a lot. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, that's right. Jeremiah prophesies just before they go here, and Jeremiah tells them, you guys, you're going to go off to Babylon, man. Bless you. You're going to go off to Babylon. Repent. Repent. And they don't repent. Instead, they beat up on Jeremiah. They get hauled to Babylon. By the way, does God preserve Jeremiah alive? And Jeremiah doesn't go to Babylon. He's preserved because he spoke God's word and stuff, although he was beat up quite a bit and things. So that's 586. This is a big date. Temple's destroyed. Jews are hauled to Babylon. By the way, how many years did they go to Babylon for? Does anybody remember that? 70 years. They go for 70 years. And why did God say 70 years? He said, you owe me because you have not kept the Sabbath year. Remember every seventh year they're supposed to let the land rest? The sabbatical year? And the Jews had not done that for like 490 years. And so God kept track of that. And he says, you're out of my land. My land is going to get its rest. You're in Babylon for 70 years. Now, had they gotten away with it for 490 years? Yeah. And God says, okay, now it's due. You're out of here. You're going to Babylon for 70 years. And they go, 586 is the date when that actually happens in a big way. 